submit to you. How many of you have children in the house? You have children in the house. Okay. Now, do your children, do you take your children for jabs? Immunizations? Do they laugh and say, Mama, please bring it on. It's very nice, that injection. What do the children do? Say it out loud. Do they cry nicely? They cry a cry that you have never heard. Because this is a child who is a few days old, a few weeks if you may. They cry a cry that you've never heard. That is a painful cry. And they wonder, look at this person that is assaulting me. In the name of doctor. Look at now, my own parent is the one holding me down to be injected. What love is there? Explain to me, mother, and this assaulter you brought my life, I was quiet, I was not even crying. You brought me an assaulter to assault me. What manner of demons are these? So guess what? The mother understands that if this child is not given this job, the problems ahead of this child will be bigger than the job. I came to let somebody know ha, that your God understands the trouble that you're in. But he lets it because of where you are going. You shall be a deliverer to the nations around you. God is using you now in this pain. At the end of the day you will see and you will know and you will understand together that the hand of the Lord has done it. <sighs> Can I preach the gospel? Uh, the, uh, let me tell you, God is the one holding you down for the injection to enter nicely. He is holding you down for the landlord to come and in, eject you from that house. He is the one holding you down <laughs> to go through some stuff you're going through right now. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying? Uh, going through some stuff that you can't even explain. I came to let you know there is a reason for the thing that you're going through. Look at your neighbor, say she came for me. Lift up your voice and say, she came for me. This brought discouragement to the children of Israel. It brought discouragement and wandering, failed expectations, lost hope. And some situations bring that kind of lost expectation, lost hope, where you're wondering, God, do you even care? Do you even see? This experience gives us an insight of God's dealings with his children. Because as long as God is going to take you somewhere, then he's going to do it his way. I want you to learn five lessons why God does what he does. I want you to glance five lessons very quickly number one God controls all circumstances towards the ultimate accomplishment of his purpose even the circumstance of that injection is controlled by God even the circumstance of that pain is controlled by God I want you to understand at the end of the day it's for the ultimate fulfillment of his purpose his purpose can never be thwarted even Joseph going to be finished by his brothers was still in the plan of God. Even as they threw him in the pit, it was still in the plan of God. That those people that passed by to come and pick him up and take him to Potiphar's house was not an accident. It was all in the plan of God. Coming from Potiphar's house to jail was not an accident. It was all in the plan of God. I want you to understand the ultimate purpose of God must be fulfilled. Whatever you need to go through to fulfill it, he will take you. He is so God that nobody can move him out of his will and power. I want you to understand number two, he makes free use of all world rulers as his tool to execute his will. Ha! Hey, let me submit to somebody in this house. Even Mugabe is in the will of God. I, I want to bring it home. I want to let you know that even Donald Trump, the world can hate all they want. Everybody can go to, can go raise hell upon Donald Trump. But I came to submit to you, he is still in the will of God. I want you to know that even Nebuchadnezzar was in the will of God. The people that look like they are coming against the children of God. God uses them for the sake of his children. They are not demonic. Please don't say they are demon possessed and they have been sent by the devil. Oh no. God's rule. Hey. God's rule is upon the earth. Nobody can 
thwart him. Nobody can move him. He is so good. He is so powerful, so omniscient, so omnipresent that everything you go through does not bypass him. He allows it for a purpose. Can I preach the gospel? I want you to understand every ruler is in the hand of God. I want you to know, number three, that God sets up and destroys nations. God sets up and destroys nations. He is God. Nobody can change or thwart his ways. He is God. Number four, God cares for his people and he overrules everything for the good of the people. So, you ask me, God, really? I can go through this hell and you're really the one in charge of this? Hallelujah. I came to submit to you. Yes, he is. As long as you're a lover of God and you're in, working in the ways of God, he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that you accomplish your purpose. And how you accomplish your purpose is sometimes through period, periodical pains. Sometimes it's through this stretching in your life. Number five, God rejoices in the opportunity to forgive his erring people and in restoring them again into his partnership. So, when you read about the children of Israel, they had relaxed in their worship to God. And so God sometimes will bring David, somebody, to remind you that he is God. When Nebuchadnezzar began to play games and began to say that, you know, that, that he is not God, God made him eat grass like a cow so that he can rise up and say, surely there is no other God. Only Jehovah is God. I came to let you know you are in the plan of God. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now God looks at his people, his children, and he begins to speak to the children of Israel that whatever they had encountered in the past, I'm about to preach to somebody in this house, whatever you had encountered in the past, so God sees them and he knows that they've gone through hell and he knows that they've lost a lot and he knows that they've paid a price and he knows, but I came to let somebody know as long as you have paid a price and finished, God is on your, God is on your side and he's coming. Lift up your voice and say hallelujah. Now watch this now. He speaks now to the children of Israel that they, whatever they have encountered will be a thing of the past that will not be remembered anymore. And all these will no longer be considered for the Bible says God is creating new heavens and new earth. I want you to understand that this promise reconfigures everything that Judah had known about the life and its identity. Whatever it is that they had gone through, Judah had been under threat from the very earliest cultural memories preserved in biblical tradition. The Bible says they were enslaved. So they went through enslavement in Egypt. They were living under the shadow of the Assyrians and the Babylonians. They were actually very, very frustrated because it, it's like they were in prison. It's like they were being in prison not to worship the God that they knew how to worship. They were actually in the brink of extinction because the Bible says they had ran away because of fear of the Assyrians and fear of the Babylonians. They had run away and integrated with people in in Egypt. Now when a child of God begins to run towards the enemy, there is trouble. But let me submit to somebody in this place that God is going to begin a new thing in your life. You're not going to run anymore. I came to let you know you are running this direction. You are about to turn around and run towards your miracle. In the I wish I had a witness in the house of God. God looks at his people because he's looking at you right now. And he sees their pain. And he understands now they are in a season of transformation. He understands now it's an hour of supernatural breakthrough. He sees that yes, you've paid the price. It's time now for me to come and show myself as God. Are you ready for God? And God begins to promise. He says from now, I'm going to give you a new beginning. Look at your neighbor. Tell them you're a new you. Tell them, oh, look, look at them one more time. Tell them you're a new you. When the word new is mentioned, several things come to mind. And, and different approaches are made based on the application of the word. The several things are, number one, fresh, something fresh. The second, th the, the second thing is, it has not been opened or tampered with. The third thing is, it has never been worn or owned by somebody else. And the fourth thing is, it has been bought from the shop or straight from the manufacturer 
just for you and with you in mind. Some instances, you will get something that has been used, but the fact that it has been given to you, it becomes new because you're holding it for the first time. Now, I want you to understand, with this understanding in view, when we look at the above scripture, when God speaks of new heavens and new earth, as he is speaking to the children of Israel, it is not a literal application, application where he will destroy the structure and then rebuild a new structure. No, it's not a literal application. He is saying that he will recreate Jerusalem as a place where joy and delight are the rule of the day for both the people and God himself. 